The end is near for legacy preferences in the college admissions process in the United States. Many colleges and universities for years, no decades, have actually given preference to applicants who are children of former graduates, basically children of alumni. Um, and that is all going to come to an end. You say, Craig, why, why are you saying this? Why all of a sudden in April 2023 are legacy admissions going to be ended in the United States? It's going to be ended in response to, I'm not saying it's the right or wrong response, I'm just saying it's going to happen. It's going to be ended in response to the Supreme Court's ruling in late spring or early summer 2023 that affirmative action is no longer allowed in the undergraduate admissions process. And again, the colleges will react by slaying legacy preferences in the admissions process. So mark my words, it's happening. You can bet on it. And the question at this point is how should you proceed knowing this? So if you are in the pool of students who thought you were going to benefit from being a child or grandchild of someone who went to the college you're applying to, you're going to have to decide that um, you're going to have to earn it a little bit more now, right? You're going to have to actually write stronger essays, have a better extracurricular resume, uh, have stronger test scores if the college still looks at test scores, um, and definitely have the highest grades you can possibly muster and strong letters of recommendation. But another thing that these colleges might pull is they may just go test uh, blind or test free as Caltech and the UCs have already gone. Uh, because, again, the colleges are going to be making every excuse possible to pump up the numbers of applicants that they can get next year and in the future years. And they're going to make the argument that without affirmative action, we're going to become monochromatic environments or PWIs, as they call them now, predominantly white institutions. I don't necessarily agree or disagree with that statement, but that's the argument that the colleges are going to make. And in order to avoid that, they're going to pull out every little rabbit out of the hat that they can within the law in order to maintain as diverse of a student population as possible. And when I say diverse as possible, what I really mean is as dominated by what they deem to be historically underrepresented students as possible. Okay, that, let's be honest. So they may well not stop with legacy preferences and admissions which is a, a given at this point, they're gonna get rid of it. They are gonna probably go on at many of these elite schools to being test free. I strongly, I, I have made this known for years, I am strongly against the test free movement because for all the drawbacks of the SAT or ACT, and there are many, it is the only standardized measure that colleges have when comparing apples to apples from around the world applicants to applicants from around the world. There are many different curricula all around the world. There are many different languages spoken all around the world. There are many different standards of teachers all around the world. Teachers write letters of recommendation differently all around the world, but the SAT was the SAT was the SAT, whether it was in Beijing or Mumbai or uh, Johannesburg or Buenos Aires or Los Angeles or Chicago or New York or Prague. So that's why I'm a very big believer in the SAT or ACT as at least a standardized tool used in order to compare uh, the ability of students to sit for and achieve success on a standardized measure test. But again, like I said, that too could be in the crosshairs. We've already found ourselves in a test optional dominated world. Within a few weeks, we could find ourselves in a test free dominated world, depending on the exact wording of the Supreme Court's ruling against affirmative action. But mark my words, the summary of this video is, if you are depending on legacy admissions, depend on it no longer. It's not going to be lasting for many more weeks yet, and it therefore it could be gone as early as the 2023-2024 admission cycle. If you were not in the world of depending on or hoping to benefit from legacy admissions preferences in the undergraduate admissions process, don't necessarily think that you have a better shot now of getting into colleges or universities. Depending on the other decisions that colleges make over the coming weeks in advance of the 2023-2024 admission cycle, which basically opens in July slash August, uh, there could be a lot of policy and procedure changes from top to bottom in terms of selectivity in the United States, depending on 
the wording of the Supreme Court ruling against affirmative action and when it takes effect. Um, so legacy preferences are definitely gone in my estimation. Uh, testing optionally versus required versus free is completely in question, depending again on the exact wording and restrictiveness of what the Supreme Court puts on colleges in terms of what they are or are not or are not allowed to do in terms of recruiting and where they can, can recruit and how they can show preferences and how they can either backdoor preferences or not backdoor things at all. But you can mark my word, legacy admissions is gone. And so if you are again a parent of a, someone who was depending on uh, legacy admissions in order to get into his or her dream college, now would be the time to figure out how you are going to put together the very best application possible, which you already should have been doing, um, but you're going to have to have that much stronger of an application if you don't get the extra brownie points of having your child benefit from legacy admissions, because legacy admissions is going to be no more by July 4th, 2023. I promise.